how are you? Okay, we're gonna throw a sort of coffee cup sized uh, thing that's called a baluster jug. Baluster jug. My failing of having read it and never uh, heard it pronounced. It's a pottery shape that was common in the 12th, 13th, 14th century, and it's a tall sort of jug. And they were often quite large, like, you know, but we're going to make a coffee cup size one instead of a, a an accurate sized one, because I don't know what I, I have a couple big ones and I don't really even know what to do with them, so we're going to stick with a smaller one. So we're going to center the clay and we're going to center it high and narrow because baluster jugs are tall and narrow. They, they tend to be about twice as tall as they are big around. So when I do something like that, I like to center it you know, high so that I'm not working against the centering when I'm pulling the walls. I also want to get it pretty carefully centered because tall pieces tend to get wonky anyway. And I don't I don't start out wonky. I may have to fix wonky in the middle. So just like normal, it's centered. Coned up and down a little bit. We're gonna find the center and then we're gonna open it up. I remember when I first started watching videos, I thought, jeepers, those people are so good. It looks so, um, it looks like they can just open the walls and do that without even any pressure or anything. Uh, now that I've started making videos, I realize that's really not the case. It just looks that way on film. So I'm gonna pull out to make a fairly narrow opening, keeping it pretty narrow. And then I'm gonna use my favorite wooden rib to compress the bottom. Again, I'm going to keep that bottom pretty narrow. Um, it's kind of the thing that makes them a baluster jug, baluster jug, baluster jug, is that they're a tall, slender piece, and they usually have um, a, like a belly in the middle, and then they often have applied clay decorations, and we'll do that when we're done throwing and the piece is dry enough to we'll add decorations. So we're gonna again we're gonna get up underneath the bottom here so that I can pull the you know sort of the weight of that clay up into the walls. And again you might as you get taller, you want to get slower and slower as you, not in the middle of a pole, but, you know, in between pulling, I turn my wheel off and then I want to go slower the next time around. And the slower that you're, the slower that you are going around, the slower that you want to move your hands. Because you can see there's these, all these, lines that are just about parallel to the wheel head and as you go you want to keep them that way if you don't end up with thin spots in your walls and that that's sometimes fixable but not convenient so you know I'm going to move much slower moving my hands up because I'm making again we want the the throwing lines to stay perpen you know, uh, parallel to the wheel head, not perpendicular, parallel. 
So we're going to pull, I think, maybe once or twice more here to get it tall enough. Because this piece needs to be pretty tall to be a baluster jug, to look like a baluster jug. size here. I think we want one more pull. Yeah, maybe two. Again, I'm going to push in on the bottom here so that I can get some of that weight out of the shoulder and up into the walls. Again, as you get taller and taller, it's more and more likely that you will inadvertently pull it off center. So I do a lot of like pushing the, the, the cylinder back to center as I go. Um, be aware that when you collar, you're, because you're pushing in, you're pushing more clay in, so then the walls get thicker, so you're going to want to pull a little bit more. So I think we're going to do one more pull, and then we're going to give it its sort of characteristic belly. I tend not to talk as I get taller and taller. I gotta think more about actually pulling the walls, keeping my hands steady. All right. Now we're gonna collar that top back in, and we're gonna trim off the top, which is a little bit wonky looking. I don't want that. I've gotten kind of obsessed with using a not very sharp X-Acto knife to trim off tops lately. I'm sure I shouldn't be, but I, I kind of do. I kind of like it. So this is going to be sort of a stylized baluster jug for, you know, the 20th century, not just, um, not necessarily for a reenactor or something, although I have done that kind of pieces. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to push the, well, we're going to straighten out that bottom a little bit so that it's not quite so ribby, quite so, okay, and then we're going to, again, we're going to curve that so that I can push against it to make sort of a belly in the middle here. The baluster jugs have a belly in the middle, not at the bottom. They're not pot-bellied, they're kind of middle-bellied. They look like I do. Skinny legs. Skinny up top. A little bit pear-shaped. And then, oh, I kind of like it. I'm digging that shape. Never made a coffee cup this shape. I Well, I have one other, but... I'm kind of digging it. It's going to make a cute coffee cup. Big handle there. Then, we're going to trim off that base a little bit. Let's see. Slow down. Put your, your wooden knife against there and gently press it down to the wheel head. So you get a little bit of separation. white clay that I'm throwing with is so much. It's a lot like porcelain. Not quite like, quite porcelain, but it's a lot like it. 
and it leaves this sort of white residue all over everything. I was trying to trim something earlier. It made a terrible mess. Every time I touched it, it made little white smudgy bits. It's terrible. All right. So then we're going to fix up that bottom a little bit there. So I think I want the rim just a, a hair narrower to kind of match the bottom. So we're going to make it a little narrower, a little taller. Narrow it in a little bit. And then I'm going to, I'm going to pull up just a hair more. Because I pushed more weight into it. So now I've got more clay to make a little bit taller rim. Just one more little pull here, just on the top bit. And then I'm going to stop and create that little line there. I really like that. Um, oh, we got a little off center again, so we want trim again. Tiny, tiny bit. Hate trimming tall pieces. The goal is to be tall. You hate trimming any height off, right? There you go. All right, so fix up that rim just one more time. Be sure it's not flared out. There we go. And we're going to put a handle on it. And we'll put some designs on it in a little bit. And there it is. Let me pull it out of there and show you what it looks like. And dump the water out that I can't get out because I don't have. Oh, let's see, I'll get a little further away. So it looks like that. And then, I don't know, we can't probably see down inside. It's a little too dark. So, here we are with our baluster jug cup thing. Um, and so we're going to we're going to add some applied um, decorations now. So, so I'm going to roll some some clay snakes. So we want um, in this case I'm going to put four lines down, one on each sort of corner, except it's a round thing, so it's not really a corner, but we'll pretend it's a corner. In order to apply these decorations, we're going to, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to sort of mark, I'm actually going to use the corners of the bat to tell me where I'm going to put them, so I'm going to sort of go like this, but and then I'm going to turn them off. Oopsie, one at the right height here. And then I'm going to turn it a quarter and and then we got this isn't all we're going to do with our applied strips, so it's kind of okay if we got a little extra here. We're going to put that one there, and then we've got one more, and we're going to put that one on that corner. Okay, so we got, now we're going to take um, a few of these, and I'm going to make sort of, sort of like this, make arches 
I think. And then we're gonna go, I think we're gonna go like this. So, oh, that's getting a little dry. That's no good. So I'm gonna take my finger. If it gets a little cracked, it, it often doesn't matter much. Um, you can go back and sort of re-moisturize it. Um, so we're going to go kind of like this. And I'm literally just going to rub until I get a little bit of slip here. Rub on my... All right, so we're going to go from there over to there. And we're going to make it join up here neatly. Neat joins, always important. Neatness counts. <laughs> Everybody who said in in elementary school, neatness doesn't really count. I don't know why neatness counts. Neatness counts. So then we're going to do, I think, one more down here. Like that. Kind of to match. So I'm going to take, oopsie. Take this. Part of what happens as you're putting slip on your clay strip is that you are um, flattening it out so that it's sort of thinner and wider. So, you know, kind of, and then again, we're gonna I'm literally just gonna pick a spot here, rub enough on the bottom, you know, rub enough water here so that we've got some slip going. And then we're going to take one end over there. And we're going to echo that, um, kind of that, oopsie, we're going to echo the um, curve of the first one on the second one. So like that, we're going to move that out. Okay, so. I need a handle. And then there's one more thing. Well, it's a bunch of little things that I like to do. Um, oops. So one of the things that I really like doing on baluster jugs that makes them sort of feel a little more special to me is I roll a little teeny ball. Okay, that's, that's about twice as big as I need, I think. Roll a little teeny ball like this. So I have a little tiny ball. Let's see that there. And then I'm going to set it down. Oopsie. And I'm going to push on one end so that I get sort of that little shape. And then I'm going to stick it on each of these little join spots. I like the sort of decorative nature of of that. So again, we're going to make a little ball, push down, so I've got a little sort of, I don't know, I don't know quite how to describe what it is, but then we're going to, oops, we're going to put it right on that join spot and sort of smooth it down so that it for sure won't come off. We don't want any of these things to come back off in my head. Okay. So now we're gonna pull a handle. I'm gonna move this 
out of my way a little bit here while I do that because I don't want to drip all over it. Think of what I'm doing as making sort of a carrot shaped piece. Kind of like that. And I want it to slip out. So you're going to grab, I get my hand real wet in the water, and then I gently pull out a thin round um, yes I know it looks obscene we're not going to talk about that part <laughs> um, you know keep your hand wet so that it slides easily over the handle or you will inadvertently just pull it off now, depending on your particular opinions, many people will do like thin it out a whole bunch. I like to thin it out a little, but I don't like to thin it out a whole lot. I don't like my handles to be um, super like thin. That's just not, I don't like the way it feels. I like a little bit more rounded handle all around than that. Um, my first teacher told me, absolutely, you should never, ever, ever have round handles. I've actually made some round handles. She said that was, it wouldn't feel nice. That is not my experience. So here we have a handle. I'm gonna, I think that's, it might be a little big. I'm gonna thin it out a little bit more now that I look at the, you know, one of the things you wanna be careful of is, looking at the piece of pottery that you're putting the handle on and it should be like the right size to go on your pottery right um and i'm gonna trim it off here set my um i always think of that as like a it looks like the top of a bone in my head the top of the femur or something Okay, so I'm going to pick this up. We're going to let this uh, sit and dry out for a little bit, and then we're going to come back and put it on the cup, but it's got to dry a little bit. All right, so here we are with our handle. Um, so I need to kind of decide where we're going to put our handle. I think I'm going to put it in the middle of one of these decorated sides. And I think Ballister jugs usually have pretty small handles. So I'm gonna cut this off. Usually it kind of grows, usually kind of goes like this, um, growing out of that, out of the, um, the belly of the pottery. So we're gonna, I'm gonna trim off, oops, I'm gonna trim off this so that I have an angle where it's gonna kind of run into the, the uh, into the jug. Like that. I'm gonna round it up nicely. Again, you know, neatness counts. Um, in pottery, when you aren't neat, it's not really fixable later often. So there we got the bottom, and then we're gonna, the top, I'm gonna tap right in the middle here and uh, hold it sort of a thin flat spot like that um, where I'm going to apply it to the cup okay so and you'll note that by doing that I've made sort of a roundy bit on the end so that it will fit neatly onto the cup I think maybe I'll actually Go right up over the top of the applied decoration. Hmm. I think I need it to be a little thinner. 
So I'm going to pull it just a little bit more here. Again, I don't want it to be um, out of Yeah, I'm thinking kind of like that. So, I'm going to get myself set up. I'm going to tap so that I have that roundy, roundy edge on my handle, top edge. And then I'm going to, where is my pin tool? I need something to score with. I guess we'll use this. <laughs> Amazing what you can do. Oh, I think I will put it on this corner. Eh, eh, it doesn't really matter, I guess. Okay, so we're going to score right here where we're going to put the top part of the handle. Score it. And then we're going to get it pretty wet so that we got some slip. The handle's still wet enough, so I'm not real worried about slipping the handle. And then we're going to sort of that and then I'm smooth it down. We're gonna let it hang there for just a minute while I smooth out this top bit. I actually am going to smooth out the rim so that you can't see sort of the join along that upper edge. I think that'll look nicer. Kind of depends on what you like. But that's kind of what I think I like this time. So then, we're gonna, let's see, we're gonna, I'm thinking we're gonna go about right there. So we're gonna, this has been trimmed off the bat, but it's, uh, Kind of restuck down, so we're gonna unstick it, and we're gonna tip this this way, and then I, I usually move the handle up a little bit so that I can score right underneath. And you want to hold this super gently, and then we're gonna go like that. Set that. Um, Make sure as you go that it's like, you know, like the handle is straight up and down. All those things that you cannot fix when you're done. If you, <laughs> if you don't do it now, it's not going to be the right, it's not going to be right. And then again, because it's just what I like on what I think I want on this, sort of depends. But on this, in this particular case, I'm going to blend away the seam so that you can't see the join. Oopsie, I guess I gotta show it to you in the right spot. And then I think, because it just feels like it would go, I'm gonna take a little bit bigger ball and I'm gonna make a little bit bigger smear here, comma, whatever you wanna call it. And I'm gonna take it, and I'm gonna stick it right here on the base of the handle. And, and uh, smooth it away like that. And then I'm gonna do one more. Except I'm, this one I'm not going to make a comma. I'm just going to make it into a little sort of I'm going to try and make it actually round. Often when you roll clay in your fingers it'll just be kind of off center. So I'm going to make it actually round. Dip it in there. Oopsie. Oopsie. Let's see. And we're gonna go. That's kind of cute. 
I kind of dig it. It's kind of ridiculous, like all the rest of it, you know? And then I'm going to, while I have this moment, I'm going to smooth out the bottom of the applied, um, each of these applied strips so that it is, and then, you know, smooth out the rim. It's important when you're making pottery to um, smooth out any um, edges, unless you want it to be an edge, because if you don't, especially if you're going to glaze it, it will get sharper as you go, and you may end up with something that is so sharp that it will actually cut you, um, and you don't want that. So clean up that handle a little bit, and then I'm going to sign it, because here we are, an original Orla. I think I'm going to sign it, instead of on the bottom, I think I'm going to sign it right along here. When you do a bunch of applied stuff, a handle or or whatever you're doing, it's important to slow dry things. You want them to dry super slow. So we're gonna, I'm gonna turn it around real slow so you can see everything that we did. All that applied decoration. 